Okay, so we have created a QuickBooks account, but before we can begin bringing in our business transactions into QuickBooks, we need to determine a start date for your QuickBooks bookkeeping records. We need a firm date in mind that that is the date that our QuickBooks bookkeeping is beginning. So the date you choose is going to depend very much on you and your business possible options. One could be the date you began your business. If you are a very proactive person and you set up those separate financial business accounts straight from the beginning and you decided that you were going to use QuickBooks and get a handle on your bookkeeping from day one, then this is obviously a great choice for you. Just choose the date you began your business and had your first business transactions. Another possibility could be January 1st, so that you can have a nice, clean tax year worth of records. So maybe you started your business late one year, and it took you a little bit to see that things were going well, that you were going to keep going. In December, you set up your separate financial accounts. And so then January 1, you're ready to have clean bookkeeping records within QuickBooks. So that could be one possible, another option that you choose. And this, that would be great. I mean, either of these first two options would be ideal. Um, a third option could be the day you established separate financial accounts. We've already talked about how things get really messy if you're combining business with personal and how QuickBooks works most effectively if you have separate business accounts that you can link into QuickBooks and just pull in your business transactions and business data and not have that messy personal and business combination thing going. So maybe you have been in business for a while, but you have just recently set up your separate financial business accounts. And so that could be an ideal day to choose where you want to connect to QuickBooks on that day and start fresh from there. So QuickBooks will be able to automatically pull in transactions going 90 days back. So whether that's checking or credit card or PayPal, QuickBooks is going to be able to go back in time. It's usually the 90 days. Every once in a while, it's a little bit different. But standardized, it's usually the 90 days. They can go back and pull in all those old transactions. So that's why we kind of need to have a date in mind. You don't have to pull in transactions for the full 90 days. You can choose just any date that you want and import after that date as well. So the 90-day rule could also impact what date you choose for your clean start. You may just want to go back 90 days in time and that will be the date you choose. But if you do need more than that 90 days of transactions to get your clean start date, you can import older transactions via a CSV file. That is if your bank or credit card company has such a file that you can download from their website and import into QuickBooks you do need to check on that. Uh, most modern day banks do have that feature, but if you're using a smaller bank that doesn't really have online banking, you may not be able to have access to that file. You could also manually add older transactions. So if it is now June and you really wanna have a January 1 start date, that's going to be way beyond the 90 days that QuickBooks can import for you. So if you can't do the CSV file import, um, you can manually add older transactions. Another option would be to pick a clean start date for your QuickBooks bookkeeping, but rely on your old bookkeeping method for the earlier dates. So back to our June example, if it's now June and you set up your separate business financial accounts. They were set up all year long. Or I, I guess that doesn't even have to be the case. But if you want to use QuickBooks to go back 90 days to get you to March, you could just 
rely on your old bookkeeping system for that first part of the year. And then come tax time, you'll have most of the year in QuickBooks. And then you just have to add in a little bit of data from your old method. Um, so you don't have to go back to your ideal date, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You can just go back that 90 days, do what QuickBooks can do. And then you're just going to have one year where you're meshing two methods. And then obviously going forward, everything's clean. So the following fiscal year will be a completely clean year in QuickBooks. So those are kind of your other options. If you choose a date that's beyond the 90 days that QuickBooks is going to automatically import for you. Okay, so make a note of the date that you chose and because we're going to need to remember that date and we're going to be working off of that date within QuickBooks. Next, we're going to begin by connecting your financial accounts to QuickBooks and begin to import all of those transactions.